I don't know if a person could actually write this type of material without it actually happening. And to tell you the truth, I don't think if I read this script and it wasn't an account of somebody's <clears throat> real life that I would believe a single word written on the page because they seem n almost unbelievable. They seem, and that's, but that's what Frank actually did in real life. You know, he was testing the boundaries of the world that he lived in. He was almost making things too obvious for people to even imagine, which is why he was such a great magician, you know? He mastered the art of misdirection. Yeah. Um, having talked to him, what did you learn from him, you know, when you had to play the character? When you had well, to play him? besides just understanding what made him engaging, and that was his eye contact and his way of making you feel so comfortable with him and his intense focus on the person that he's talking to and making you feel special constantly, it's, it was his, 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 his ability as an actor and what he didn't put in his book were the way he sort of chame uh, like a chameleon transformed himself into these different you know these different roles as a doctor and a lawyer and and he uh, he actually put on different accents at time at times and it was something that he he didn't even he, he, there was no account of that in anything that he ever wrote so I so I asked him to give me an example of a con he got on the phone and all of a sudden he went into this southern drawl I was like, do you realize what you're doing? He's like, no, no, I, I'm not putting on an accent. And I said, yeah, yeah, you are. And uh, so that was amazing for me because I just associated that with like, the accent must have been some voice, voice of authority at the time, the southern accent, you know. And it was just some, something that he unconsciously did that was completely instinctive that he didn't even know he did. So that was, these things were the, you know, the most fascinating and the most, you know, the, gave me the most as an artist. Yeah. He is very charismatic when you meet him, but on screen, do you carry that charisma very well? Why do you think that's so? I don't know. Because I, I, I was into the character. I was, I was excited about being able to embody this guy. I, I think that, you know, it, people ask me why I wanted to play this role, and I said, well, if you if you'd read the script, it, you know, it re reads like wildfire, and this would be a dream role for anyone to play, you know? So it was, just, it was just one of those things that was just plainly obvious. Yeah. Did you have a favorite uh, Frank to play? Uh, I, liked, I liked James Bond Frank, yeah, because I think he really <laughs> embodied, embodied the, the, the suavete word, suavete, <laughs> I don't know, suavete of the real Bond. But that was the most fun because I think he enjoyed that himself in real life the most too. Yeah, it was such a refreshing film. It was so good. It's what uh, Taft Fujimoto uses to light all of his movies. They kind of look you. like bug zappers. They do. Right? Let's test it. Give <laughs> <laughs> me a bug you're throwing. <laughs> so uh, I was talking to Frank, the real Frank. You could make this story up, I don't think. I think if you did, you'd say, okay, look, you can't, he can't be a teacher, a pilot, a doctor, a lawyer. You've got to lose one of those, if not two. You can't have him go around the world on this thing. You can't have it end up him pr you know, printing his own shit. It's just too much. The audience isn't going to believe it. You can't have him have that much sex. <laughs> you're going to have to. You're going to have to lose some of it. You can't have him get married. On you can't. They're not going to believe it. You wouldn't. If this movie, without knowing that, it had gone through like a studio's notes, oh, would have been would have been crazy. Yeah. So, what was the appeal for you to do this one? That and it really did. Part. Honestly, that it really did happen. That that he'd actually did all this stuff in this very short amount of time. Jeff Nathanson had distilled this book down to a perfect crackling screenplay. And, and usually reading screenplays is like doing homework, you know, you gotta, I, got, I gotta read a chapter on French history tonight. Uh, instead, this thing was like seeing the movie when I read it, and went uh, uh, like a house on fire. Leo was already attached, Stephen wasn't, so I was just reading it as a, as a, a, a sample of, of Jeff's writing. I said, there's a magnificent role in the middle of this. This guy, Carl Hanratty, he, he's the outrage, he's the morals, he's, he's the... Uh, He's, the, he's the, the engine, the machine, the motor that drives the entire rest of the movie. This is a great part. And so, uh, so I horned it on Leo's movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, as far as the real life person, he's still alive. Yes. And have you talked to him? No. Uh, he's not represented in the book. And like 
uh, <laughs> like any good FBI agent, he doesn't want to be known as a former FBI agent, so he is a man of mystery to me. What I was going for, there were FBI agents I could talk to in order to get a sensibility of what it's like to be in the Bureau and what your life is like and how much fun it is to, you know, do what they do in order to catch crooks. And to an agent, men and women, as well as uh, uh, our onset advisor, um, they all said it's the greatest job in the world. They loved working for the Bureau. They loved the life. They loved the discipline. They loved the hierarchy. They loved the bureaucracy. Uh, they fought against it sometimes, but more than anything else, they loved being a part of something as big as the FBI is. Did you seek out, though, FBI agents from the 60s? Because the time period really is important because, in a way, I mean, technology today, you couldn't have somebody writing bad checks and it not catching up with him. Or you, could it? You'd think so. The, I, could, I, if you, I could give you a way in which you could pass a bad check tomorrow. And you could cash somebody else's check tomorrow. And it still exists exactly the same way as it did now. So the, 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 there's some aspects of the time, the 60s, which are fascinating. But really, you're, you're, all you're talking about is human nature. And human nature hasn't changed. Yeah. What, have you seen, you've seen the film? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite scene? Well, yeah, I, oh, they, man, there's a lot. I mean, this, there, I love the scene between myself and Leo in, in the motel room. Uh, I think that's great. I love our, I love our telephone conversations that we have. And I, I must say that everything that takes place on the airplane, you know, on, uh, uh, with, with he and I together, I, 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 think that's, I think that's great stuff. Great, thanks. It was so refreshing to I'm, see. I'm glad you really liked it. Good. I, think I don't think that this could have been, this story could have been written by a, by someone without it having actually happened. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. What was the appeal for you? Well, it was a good part. And, uh, you know, and also something different. You know, he's a real person. Usually I play some little monster. Yeah. Now, of course, he's not alive today, but wh what do you think he would have thought of his son? Uh, you know, basically his story being on the screen now. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it is a true story. I don't, I don't know much about the story, uh, the, the book that it's from. I didn't read that book uh, because I ju just wanted to concentrate on, you know, what the script said. Um, yeah, the guy's life is amazing that, that he... Uh, you know, that he had the resourcefulness and the intelligence and the talent, you know, to do that stuff. And apparently with no ill effects, you know, it's really an all's well that ends well thing. It really did. It really did. Uh, was it a fun set to be on? Yes, very much. Now, what did you, as far as the character, because you didn't have him and, and you hadn't read the book, as far as his sort of personality, was that something you did, or did that come through the script? I assumed, you know, that Stephen had hired me because whatever it is about me w would suit the character. Sure, I just believed that. I don't think that he would have had me in the movie if he'd have had to say, you know, Chris, I, uh, this is, you know, what this guy, you know, I think I got hired because there was something about me that. That, uh, I mean, I am an actor, and uh, I think that when I when I'm acting in movies, I'm I'm not like a person. I'm like an actor, and that that uh, the, my character in this movie is a bit of an actor, you know. But a con man um, has to be an actor. Mm -hmm. Did you have a favorite scene? Have you seen the film? Yes, I did. Uh, no, I liked the whole movie. You know. And th all the obvious things, you know, Leo and Tom and, and uh, Martin Sheen and, and, uh, and, and Natalie and uh, all those things. But I was really pleasantly surprised when I saw it. I thought that the girls in this movie are really adorable, aren't they? Yeah. One after the other, the bank teller and the nurse and, the, and all those stewardesses, they're really, they're really cute. Yeah. It's opening Christmas Day, which I think just, it's such a fun holiday. Yeah, sure. It's a family movie, definitely. Yeah. What did you, you know, working with Steven Spielberg, how did you like working under the direction of him? It was great, you know, effortless. Um, 
you know, terrific directors, they make the, you know, there's an atmosphere on the set that's playful, fun. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of moving around for this film, a lot of different sets. Um, did it, did it, was that momentum good for the film, you think? I mean, did that? Yeah, you know, my, my uh, time on the movie, I think, was, you know, I don't know, about two weeks, and they did my stuff in sort of a chunk, and uh, so to me, it didn't feel like we were moving around that much. At one point, we came and did some, uh, I think, one day in New York City. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else is going on? I'm making a movie called Hell Dorado right now. Oh. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, it's an action adventure thing. It's with The Rock. Um, that's Very cool. All fun. Now, first time meeting him when you got on the set? I hadn't met him, but I mean, I've been around him now for a while. But uh, yeah, he's a terrific guy. Yeah, he has a good energy. Yeah. Great. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I make myself laugh. So <laughs> <laughs> often. Hey, why not? Yeah, exactly. This must have been a fun role to play. It absolutely was. Absolutely. Now tell me about getting onto this film and doing this role. How did that all happen? Um, you know, it was pretty painless actually. Um, I auditioned for the film and had a meeting with Steven and I got a call in about four days that I, I had received the role. And it was exciting. It was kind of unbelievable. Yeah. For a long time. <laughs> Still is kind of unbelievable. You know, tell me about playing a 60s girl. How did you like that? I liked it a lot. She was really, um, really sweet and really nice. And these were values back then when they were really valued. And now I think it's seen sometimes as a sign of weakness when you're that open and that vulnerable. And I just loved being able to delve into that side of myself. So we're all very, you know, but typically we keep that side in inside so it was nice to get to bring it out mm -hmm. now, have you met the real Frank I have not I have not I'm gonna try to con him later go downstairs now is this part of the real story his real story is Brenda really um I think she's a blend of uh, a lot of women in his life and uh, blend it all into one um, perfect person no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh yeah I think she's she's just uh, a amalgamation is what they said and I like that word so mm -hmm. Um, as far as her sort of personality coming through, was that more of Steven directing you, or did you add anything to the character? Um, I came with the basic personality. Um, I, get that's, I come with several personalities. I'm like Barbie. I mean, you know, I'm Brenda Barbie. No, I'm, but uh, I, Steven definitely brought out a side of uh, a humorous side of her that I had maybe not seen. I saw it much more dramatic, and he he made her a lot of fun, which was which I liked a lot. Yeah. How did you like working on this set? It must have been fun. It was very fun. Everybody was had a great sense of humor and a great sense of um, play, as well as amazing professionalism. Mm -hmm. Wait, did you have you seen the film? I have seen the film. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a favorite scene? Um, I have a couple favorite scenes. Absolutely. My favorite. I love the scene where I first meet him. The the scene that's my scene that is my favorite. I like that. Mm -hmm. He's he's so sweet and she's so sad. <laughs> So sort of pathetic in a way. Um, yeah, what did you like about her? I loved that she was so willing to um, to love him and that she just, she really needed somebody at that time too. So, you know, it's like, it's like in life when two people who need something specific find each other, it just works. And I think that's what it was. She was lonely and, and not probably, you know, she had these braces and probably wasn't feeling great about herself and, you know, she's a teenager and to have somebody who is so suave and smooth and funny be complimenting me and talking to me, it was just, you know, amazing. I mean, we all know that feeling when that, that perfect man comes in and talks to you. You're like, sure, somebody's standing behind you. What was the appeal for you to do this film? I, they tracked you down for this one. The what? They tracked you down. They came to find you for this role. Yes. Um, you can't refuse a film with Steven Spielberg. It's a law, <laughs> you know. And it's such a fantastic experience, and I'm very m proud and very happy to, to belong to this film because I love the film. I saw the film yesterday for the first time, and I, was, I enjoy it so much. I think it's a fantastic oh. holiday film. Oh, great. Yeah, that's true.
you know. Um, now tell me for the for um, as far as her as far as Paula, um, since she's not alive today, what, did you incorporate any um, nuances about her character yourself, or was it really in the script? It was it was in it, it was in the script, and I asked a few questions to Stephen about um, why she's like that, why she's not. They had a scene who is not still in the scene in the, in the film anymore, where you you. We said that she get married very, very young, you know, when she met her husband in, in France during the war, and uh, suddenly she, she, she was pregnant, and she, was, she, was, she has to get married very quick, and, uh, and suddenly she was 18 on, and living in America, far away from her family, and, uh, and a little, she felt a little lost, you know. So she, maybe the reason she's not such a good mother, but... Um, she loves her son, and but she's a little like a little bird who suddenly, um, you know, she she wants to move a little bit, and she chant her husband. But uh, Stephen wanted that she smoke all the time and she drink a little bit, and uh, but I like that kind of character, a little borderline like that, and it's great. Fun. Yeah. So you had fun with this role. I'm sorry. You had fun with this. Oh role. yes, yes, I had fun. Yes, yes. And the 60s, at the close of the 60s, and uh, the, the first day when I, shoot, when I was shooting, and Stephen said, okay, you smoke all the time, cigarettes. It was the morning, I, had, I was terrified, my first day, no rehearsal, smoking cigarettes all the time. I said, oh my God, the evening when I came back to the hotel, I was completely <laughs> dizzy. You know? But uh, no, no, it was, a, I had a fun, uh, good experience. So it's safe to say you're not a smoker then, and, and you didn't pick up the habit after this movie. Yeah, so I need a c I'd love to have a cigarette right now. <laughs> oh, you are a smoker. No, I used to be a smoker, and I stopped, and suddenly I did another film since the, this shooting in, uh, where I had to smoke, too, and it's very hard when you have to smoke in the film and then stop. It's a very difficult experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. How did you like working with Steven? It's, uh, it's great. It's a fantastic experience. You have to... You have to know your job very well because there's no rehearsal and he's shooting very fast. But he gives you a lot. He loves actors. He's very close to us and he's uh, enjoy everything. He's uh, he's like a kid on the set, you know. He knows exactly what he wants, but he's open. You can ask him a lot of questions and uh, oh yes, Natalie, let's do. It. He's he's. He he has something so young in his character. He's, uh, he's a wonderful man. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you so Hello. much. Hello.